Hello everyone and welcome back to the OpenGL 3D game tutorial series. In this second episode, we see how to create our own cross-platform 3D engine. In particular, we will see how to initialize OpenGL through the GLAD library, how to send draw commands to the GPU through the OpenGL context, and as last thing, we will see how to use the first OpenGL functions to clear the content of our window with a specific color. From this episode onwards, we will support all the main operating systems, like Windows, Linux and Mac OS. As always, we will face three main parts, requirements, design and implementation of all the necessary things to create and initialize our cross-platform engine. Let's start with the requirements. We need a C++ IDE. In this series, we will use Visual Studio on Windows and Qt Creator on Mac OS and Linux. The target platforms are Windows, Mac OS and Linux. The target graphics API is OpenGL. And last but not least, a bit of knowledge of C++ programming language is recommended. Now we can start the design part. What's the problem to solve this time? We want to create a cross-platform 3D engine, so let's add a graphics engine into our class diagram. This class should provide us all the necessary functions to draw elements on the screen, like for example the clear function that allows us to clear the contents of our window with a specific color. But how can we draw concretely something on our window? Through the usage of the so-called Graphics API. A Graphics API is a set of rendering functions, usually written in C or C++, that allows us to draw on the screen, from simple lines or points to complex 2D, 3D scenes. In this series, we will use OpenGL, a cross-platform graphics API that will allow us to render our game on multiple platforms like Windows, Linux and Mac OS. Now, let's come back to our engine class. As we have said before, the purpose of this class is to provide the rendering functions, but it's also in charge to load and initialize OpenGL during its construction. Since OpenGL initialization is a really long task where we should retrieve the set of all the OpenGL functions, a really big set, manually, we will use a library that does this for us, in particular the GLAD library. Once the OpenGL is initialized, we have to create another important resource called context. In OpenGL, a context allows to handle the various OpenGL resources like textures, buffers, and so on, and to execute OpenGL functions in order to draw their output on a specific viewable surface, like a window. Since an OpenGL context is tightly bound to a specific window, we will handle it inside the window class. What happens next? At this point, there are three operations to do. Bind the OpenGL context of our window, in particular the display window created in the previous tutorial, as current at the game initialization. And at each cycle of the game loop, call the various OpenGL rendering function, like for example GL clear color and GL clear, in order to clear the window with a specific color. And in the end, we have to show the final rendered image on the window with a function like swap layer buffers. If you have questions, doubts, or comments about this topic, don't hesitate to leave them in the comment section of this video or in the Discord server. The link to the Discord server is available in the video description. Also, if you find these tutorials helpful, please consider to support their development on Patreon. Every single contribution makes the difference, regardless the amount. Very well, we have gathered all the necessary information to start the implementation.
As first thing, let's go to the O Windows C file. Here we are to improve a bit the code of the previous tutorial. Here we don't have to call register class X inside assert, because if we compile the game in release mode, the assert becomes a null operation and register class X is removed. Let's retrieve the result of register class X and let's check it with assert. Remember that assert is used by the developer to check for possible internal errors that are not influenced by any external factors. It shouldn't be used to check errors done by the user, for the exceptions should be used. You can use the result of register class X inside create window X through the usage of make int atom. The next improvement to do is to remove all the methods required to inform the game class that the Windows is opened or not. We remove those methods because we can set the quit signal to the game class by calling post quit message during the WM close event. Then, in order to receive the quit message in the game class, we have to check for the WN quit message during the game loop. If we have a WN quit message, let's set the is running attribute to false. In this way, we can leave the loop in a clean way. The last improvement to do is to use make unique function in order to make a unique pointer. Good, let's see if it works. And it works. Now we can finally start to make our graphics engine. Let's add a new folder and let's call it graphics. Then let's create a new class and let's call it O Graphics Engine. As usual, let's move them in their correspondent folders.
In order to use GLED, let's open the project properties. Let's include the GLED path inside the Include Directories field. Very well, the next step to do is to include the gled.h and gled-wgl.h header files inside our graphics engine C++ file. gled.h contains all the normal OpenGL functions. gled-wgl contains, instead, only the definition of Windows-specific OpenGL functions required to initialize and use OpenGL on the Windows operating system. Another important thing to do is to include the gled.c and gled-wgl.c inside our project in order to provide the implementation of the various gled functions. Now we have to initialize and load OpenGL. In order to do that, we have to create a dummy window exactly for this purpose. So let's take this snippet of window code written previously and let's pass it in the graphics engine constructor. Let's call the window class OGL3D dummy window and let's set a default window procedure. Let's remove adjust window rect since we don't have to even show the window. And now let's change the parameters passed to create window x function with some default values. The first thing to do in order to initialize OpenGL is to call the ChoosePixelFormat function. This function allows to retrieve a specific pixel format that we have to set for the surface of the window just created, in order to be used with OpenGL. The surface of the window is retrieved through the getDC function, where DC stands for Device Context.
Good, once we have the pixel format handle, we have to set it to the surface of our window through the set pixel format function. Now that the surface of our dummy window is OpenGL ready, we can start to create the OpenGL context. We can define this as the entry point of OpenGL. Let's set this context as current. In this way, all the next OpenGL functions called will refer to this context. The purpose of creating an OpenGL context here is to initialize all the OpenGL function for all the version of OpenGL till the 4.6 version. Without creating this initial context, we will not be able to load modern OpenGL. As we have said in the introduction, to load all the OpenGL functions we use the GLAD library, in particular the GLAD load WGL function that requires the device context of a window and the GLAD load GL function. Since the GLAD functions could fade for external factors like driver or GPU, let's check this potentially fails through the exceptions. If everything works fine, OpenGL is loaded and we can release all the objects we have created in the constructor. Cool, now we can go to the game class and we can create our graphics engine. Let's handle it always with a unique pointer. And let's be sure to instantiate it before anything else.
In the end, let's check eventual exception in the main C++ file by adding a try-catch block and let's catch the standard exception. Here, let's show the eventual error messages through the cout function. Another important thing to do is to link the game to the opengl32.lib. In order to provide the definition of functions like wgl create context and wgl make current. As last thing to do, let's set the style cs underscore on DC. If we don't set this style, we could face a slowdown of the frame rate. Let's debug it by adding a breakpoint at the beginning of the constructor. Everything seems to work well. Let's go ahead and let's create an OpenGL context for each window. So let's go to our windows.c file. Here we have to do practically the same things we have done previously in Graphics Engine class, but with some differences. In particular, we have to use OpenGL specific functions to choose the pixel format, called WGL Choose Pixel Format ARB, where we have to set again similar attributes of the pixel format descriptor structure.
Once we have retrieved the pixel format handle, we have to convert this OpenGL specific pixel format in a Win32 compatible pixel format. We can do this by using the describe pixel format function. Then we use again the set pixel format. As last thing, let's create a new OpenGL context where we have to indicate the OpenGL version we want to use. In our case, let's use the last version available, that is OpenGL 4.6. Let's store the context in a suitable attribute. And as last thing, let's release the OpenGL context when the window is destroyed. Very well, let's see if it works. And again, everything seems to work fine.
when we close the application, if we check the output window and we find this kind of lines, it means that the graphics driver has been loaded at the beginning and unloaded at the end. This should be the correct behavior. If the graphics driver is not unloaded, probably OpenGL has not been released correctly through the delete context function. Very well, let's go to the fun part. Let's add our first OpenGL drawing functions, in particular the clear function. This function should clear the window content with a particular color, so we should pass four float parameters. Red, green, blue and alpha values. Since we want to use less parameters possible, let's make a vector4 class in a math folder. Let's call it OVEC4. As the name suggests, a vector4 is a vector of four values. In this case, we define four float values. Then we set this vector 4 as the color parameter of the clear function. At this point, we can finally call the OpenGL functions, in particular the GL clear color, where we have to pass the red, green, blue and alpha values. And then we have to call the GL clear function, where we clear effectively the content of the window binding to the context currently set as current. Very well, let's add two new methods to the window class that are make current context and present. In make current context, we call WGL make current, that makes the context of this window current.
and in present method we call WGL swap layer buffers in order to show the final rendered image on the window. Let's call WGL swap interval X in order to set the vertical synchronization. We have nearly finished, we have only to define some virtual callback methods in the game class, like on create, on update and on quit, in order to handle them in a future derived class. Let's call on create at the begin of run method, on update at the end of the loop, and on quit at the end of the run method. Let's set the OpenGL context of our display at the game initialization. And let's clear our window with a red color during the onUpdate method. Here I erroneously placed the code inside onCreate. The code should be written in the onUpdate method. In the end, let's present the final rendered image on the screen with the present function. Let's see if it works. And it works! We are finished, but there is another important step to take care of. Since we want to use this code in other platforms like Linux and macOS, we have to separate platform-specific code from cross-platform code. To do that, let's start by adding cwin32game.c++ file and here let's place only the Windows-specific code, in this case the run method. Let's do the same things for graphics engine, but here let's move the constructor and the structure.
In the end, we have the window, but since the window is the only object heavily platform specific, let's simply rename all window.c file in C win32 window. That's all, now we are ready to prepare our game for Linux and Mac OS. The code for Linux and Mac OS is already available on GitHub. Since the code to write in order to support Linux and Mac OS is not so different from the one written for Windows, I think it's not necessary to make further tutorials for them. The Linux and Mac OS code is really straightforward to understand once you have done this tutorial. Let's only see how to compile our OpenGL game on Mac OS through the usage of Qt Creator. The link to the Qt Creator installer is available in the video description. Once we have opened Qt Creator, let's click on the Edit button on the top left. Let's right click here and let's select Load Project. Go to the cloned repository and in the tutorial 2 underscore 2 folder, let's open the opengl-game.pro file. Let's check if there is at least one kit selected, in this case the one called desktop Qt CLang 64 bit, and then let's click on configure. The only thing to do now is to press the play button. The Windows is opened exactly as in Windows. As we can see here, the way in which the Cocoa window code is handled is practically the same as the Win32 one. The only thing that changes is the implementation. In order to compile a game on Linux, we have to do the same exactly things done here with macOS. From the next tutorial onwards, we will don't have to care anymore about these platform specific things. That's all for now, folks. Today we have seen how to create a cross platform 3D engine and how to initialize OpenGL. In the next episode, we will see how to make our first triangle in OpenGL. I hope you enjoyed this video. See you soon. Thanks for watching.